Thank you to CyberPal for sponsoring this video. So I was at CES. I was surrounded by robots that can do everything, including pull things out of hats. They can fold laundry, robots that pour coffee, robots that played ping pong, and robots that actually beat me at chess. And somehow, the robot that got my most attention was a monitor. And not because of like what was on that monitor, because when I walked up to it and turned to look at me, and then it followed me, and I felt like I was meeting like desktop Jarvis for the first time. And as somebody who's been reading comic books since I was about yay tall and watches every single MCU movie, meeting something that looks like something I saw in a movie and I saw Robert Downey Jr. talk to does innately make me a bit excited. So in that vein, meet my buddy, CyboPal1. After spending time with it, I think this might actually be the most interesting and useful thing I saw at CES this year. And it's most definitely not the flashiest, but it did make me realize we've been doing monitors wrong for 40 years. And I think the coolest products are the ones that find problems and then solve it. And I think CyboPal is on the verge uh, of doing that. Before I get full on uh, robotic arm on you, I do wanna do something else for you and give you a chance to win $500. Thank you guys for your support, for supporting the channel all these years. This is my favorite thing to do, is to give back. Made this super easy. Tell me the first thing you would do with your new CyberPal One monitor. Leave in a comment down below. Make sure there's a way to contact you either in the comments uh, or on your YouTube page. You can enter once per day. Let it run for 10 days up to anyone in the world. You gotta watch the video all the way through and give the video a thumbs up. So just some background, um, there's a TV behind me. I've been reviewing those things uh, for a very, very long time. But the actual experience of using a monitor, right? Think about using your monitor, your laptop, whatever you sit down, adjust your chair, get your arms right. You maybe tilt the screen and then you just sit there. That's kind of been the deal. At least for me, since I was a kid with a CRT display playing Oregon Trail, the screen still sits and you adapt to it. CyberPal has taken that script and flipping the whole thing. Uh, this is a screen that adapts to you, and let me explain. All right, so CyberPal One is a 24-inch 4K display mounted on a six-axis robotic arm. The thing can tilt, swivel, extend, retract, rise, lower, all automatically based on where you are and what you're doing. And it's not like you have to actually pick up the monitor and move it around, like it will do all of that thing for you. The company's calling it active tracking, and watching it work is kind of surreal. But let me just set up and answer the big, giant question in the room of like, why do I need this? Did you have a chance to ask the CEO some of these questions? And his answers I thought were interesting. But the big one is if you physically have to move monitors and not everybody has a stand that can move, adjust and swivel. And if you do, good for you. Uh, but most monitors are sitting on a desk, maybe VESA mounted, if you're especially fancy. Uh, but usually the monitor is static. But having something that if you wanna make your desk a standing desk, you stand up, the monitor rises with you. You wanna lean back and whatever, watch the finale of Stranger Things, you can lean back and the monitor will come up to give you a perfect view of it. Uh, you wanna focus on something else, move the monitor off to the side and drill some things on your laptop or have it even as a secondary display, you can do that. And all this is happening too with sensors like built into display and the base. Uh, no button press, no voice command. I can do some hand motions if I want it to or it just rose and shifted with me. I thought that was kind of cool and the whole time the robot was pretty dead silent. It wasn't like making huge creaks or servo noises or mechanical grinding that you might expect. Uh, it was smooth and quiet in a way that felt less like a robot and more like the screen was just paying attention. And I will admit, when I heard six axis robotic arm on your desk, part of me pictured one of those, I don't know, I see it, but the red mechanical arms at Tesla factory that could pick up and build a car. Uh, that's not what this is. They talked about this having, and the CEO talked about it too, having a bone and skin philosophy. And the CEO talked about it and he said, uh, We actually spend a lot of time to um, think about how should a uh, desktop robot look like, especially for a robotic monitor. So first, it needs to be a long enough arm length so that it can adapt to different kind of uh, people with different height. So another thing is that you need to it kind of uh, thin and uh, harmony with your desk environment. So um, we believe first you have to make some very strong bones inside so that the whole thing can move steady and even more quietly and elegantly. And another thing is that we would like to leave a lot of uh, 
improvise or creation space for future development of this product. You can have different kinds of skins and the materials for uh, different styles. The other question I think people would have aside from being able to move, why would I need this if I could just move a monitor myself? Security, right? There's a camera in the monitor, there's a camera in the base. What's happening with those cameras and where's that data going? And the CEO was very, very clear. We value our clients, our customers' privacy very, very much. Mm -hmm. And we believe local AI process is, is a important and must have thing in, the, in this kind of product. So all the data, this thing does not connect to internet anyway. Uh, all the data are processed locally and we have a little AI chip inside the base here that can process your gestures, but nothing goes on the line, goes on the cloud. I should also say that this is a prototype and it was very prototypey. They were coding uh, up until they let me sit down and play with it. And usually if something at CES that's not shipping it, you can tell. There's a wobble, the fin finish is rough, the demo person won't let you actually touch it because they're terrified. It's all gonna fall apart. You have to walk some golden path this felt more like a finished product. No creaking, solid build, premium materials, and I've seen plenty of shipping products that felt way cheaper uh, than this prototype. And again, when I sat down with Dr. Frederick Peng, the CEO who created this thing, if you wanna see that full conversation about why he built it and where the tech is headed, I'll link to the full interview down below. But the short version uh, is he watched the engineering team sort of hunched over their desks late one night and thought they've got these incredible machines and we're crippling ourselves to use them. So the CyberPal one also has more than that too. Uh, it's got gesture controls, voice commands, something called air cursor. So literally you can sit back and you can just, with your finger, move the cursor around, click and select. You want to interact with AI or whatever you have up there. You don't have to ever touch your mouse and keyboard. That part, I don't know if I'm quite ready for, but it should be something that works and felt more minority reporting as I kind of leaned back and moved my finger and the mouse moved and the monitor came with me. There's a little screen on the bottom dock, they're calling it poly, that kind of shows you what mode you're in and system understood. So who is this for? Because I don't think it's for everyone. If you have a monitor that you can articulate on your own and you're fine doing those things on your own, then probably this is not the product for you. But if you are the type of person who moves and stands and necks hurt and things in your body start to ache and you wish the monitor would just move with you and you wish you had a standing desk but don't want to buy one, uh, you can kind of make your own standing desk by just standing up and your monitor going up there with you. This is really cool. Um, and it really worked. And if you've got a real home office setup, or you're somebody who's already invested in a good chair and a monitor arm, you still end up frozen in the same position all day, this is solving that problem in a way that nothing else does. Price is a big question mark here. They have not announced that yet. It is going on Kickstarter and giving a $500 discount for early backers, which tells me the full price is going to be probably real money. You've got precision motors, computer vision, AI tracking, astro robotics. That's not sort of a bill of materials for like a $200 Amazon monitor. Uh, if you're cross shopping this against a basic display, you're probably in the wrong aisle. This is competing, I think, more with like the Herman Miller crowd. People have already spent money trying to fix their setup looking for what's next. It is coming, and they're targeting mid-ish 2026. Uh, links though to check it out, Kickstarter if you want to sign up will be down below. So look, I see a lot of stuff at CES. Uh, most of it is last year's things made slightly thinner or with AI slapped on the box. Uh, CyboPal is building something that I hadn't seen before. And talking to Dr. Peng, you get the sense this is just the start. He's got this vision of the whole desk becoming responsive, a microphone that turns towards you, lighting that reads the room, screen that rises when you stand up, and all that working together so you're not thinking about your setup, you're just working or creating or whatever you're doing. Uh, we're not there yet. It does feel like a big step towards that. This is the first time a piece of hardware felt like it was paying attention to me instead of the other way around. Closest thing to Jarvis that I've ever seen and probably will ever see. Um, again, if you want to check it out or get an early Kickstarter, the link is down below.